So if you don't know this by now, the Indian Space Research Organization's GSLV Mark II failed to insert the EOS-3 satellite into the orbit. Plus five seconds. Lift off normal. Attention all stations. This is Range Operations Director. Performance uh, anomaly observed in the cryogenic stage. Mission could not be uh, accomplished fully. Now, if you watch the stream, everything was quite normal till the second stage separated from the third stage. If you don't know, the third stage of GSLV Mark II has a cryogenic upper stage engine. And this engine is developed indigenously, which means it was totally made by ISRO. Now, if you look at the stream at the moment when it separated, a few seconds later, you will see that it had an induced roll. Now, roll is never good in a rocket. You don't want your rocket to roll. That's why you have systems to control your rocket's roll. Many times, these systems are called vernier engines that can control the way your rocket is spinning. Now, because it was spinning, we first guessed that the vernier engines failed. And then it started to go haywire in some direction. We don't know if that was the camera perspective shift or if that was actually the launch vehicle going haywire. But whatever, in the starting we were speculating that the Vernier engine messed up. But then we saw this. This was the last time we saw the data screen before ISRO shut down the stream to hide the conversation between the scientists after this. But this screen is enough to give you the idea of what happened. In this corner you see the live events. Now these events, if you see, the first event is the liquid booster ignition. Then we have solid booster ignition. In the last, we also see the cryogenic upper stage ignition, but we see the word commanded in front of it. What commanded means is that it was only commanded, the ignition wasn't successfully reported back, which simply means that the engine failed to ignite. Now, if the cryogenic upper stage failed to ignite, there was no acceleration. If you look in this corner, you see the trajectory. This is the altitude by time graph. And you see that it is fairly parabolic. And by parabolic, we mean that it was in a free fall and there was no engine acceleration taking place. Moreover, you can see the orbital velocity that we have over here. At this point, the velocity at which it is moving is 4 point something kilometers per second, which means that we didn't even reach close to the actual velocity at which we would have inserted into the orbit. And it re-entered the atmosphere. You can see the last time, the last number we see is 105 kilometers. And this really shows how ready we are for future big missions like NASA with NASA and the Gaganyaan. Um, it could be really just fortune that this did not happen with Gaganyaan missions, which was supposed to happen in late 2020 or 2021, but is now happening with these missions. But um, now what about this? What about the satellite? Well, um, we can just say that it crashed somewhere near the Andabar Nicobar Islands. And um, there will be a replacement for this. Either there will be a new satellite like GISAT-2 or they will just make a new GISAT-1, whatever. But now we really need to see the reliability of our cryogenic upper stage engines. And um, many people also suggest because this satellite and the launch vehicle were sitting for more than a year in ISRO's facilities, maybe the engine would have degraded in quality and failed to ignite for that reason. So yeah, that's basically what happened. The engine did not light and my efforts of getting up at 5.43 all got spoiled. Thanks for watching this video.